Good day. My name is Herman Bayer, and I'm going to talk to you briefly uh, about dictionaries today and how they can be used in the classroom with our learners, but I'm going to focus specifically on dictionary skills training and what we should keep in mind when we are going to plan a dictionary pedagogy or a dictionary training program for learners. In 2009, we asked about 500 school leavers what they think a dictionary is. About 80% of them told us a dictionary is a book with words and their meanings in it. Well, of course, this is the sort of answer we expected. But what did the other 20% say? Well, their answers ranged from something like a dictionary is the way to success or down to dictionary is a book used by nerds. So we learned two things from these definitions that they gave us of what a dictionary is. Number one, there are, there's a body of knowledge about dictionaries that is perhaps not always accurate and that can be worked on. And number two, there are attitudes towards dictionaries and their use. But we went further and we asked those 500 school leavers if they had ever been taught dictionary skills while they were at school. And of those school leavers, only 60% said yes, they had received some instruction in dictionary use. We didn't ask what type of instruction, but some instruction. It is interesting that 40% of those school leavers never heard a word about dictionaries while they were at school. And this is in spite of the fact that our school language syllabuses require us to teach dictionary skills at school. So why did 40% of those learners not hear anything about dictionaries at school? Or maybe we should ask, why did the relevant teachers not teach those learners anything about dictionaries while they were at school? And the answer might be, that perhaps those teachers didn't have the skills to teach those dictionary skills. Maybe they themselves didn't know what we can get out of dictionaries. What would be those teachers' attitude towards dictionaries and their use? But let's start at the beginning. I don't think anyone will disagree with me if I say that there are different types of dictionaries. I mean, there are dictionaries that are maroon colored, there are dictionaries that are almost red, and there are dictionaries that are bluish in color. And these are all, shall we say, medium-sized dictionaries. And opposed to them, there are minute dictionaries. And there are also the massive dictionaries. And then of course we can also say that there are expensive dictionaries and cheap dictionaries. But if we are going to classify dictionaries according to these criteria, what their colors are, how much they cost, how much they weigh, we're going to miss the point. We're not going to have a useful classification. We should classify dictionaries according to what they can do for us. And what can they do for us? A dictionary is a sort of a tool that has to provide information for us in certain situations that we need. It's very much like a screwdriver. You need a specific type of screwdriver to screw in or out a specific type of screw. But you also need to know how to use the screwdriver. In the same way that a screwdriver is a tool, a dictionary is also a type of tool. So, you have to choose the right dictionary, but you also have to know how to use that dictionary for that dictionary to do something for you. And if a dictionary doesn't do anything for us, there can be three reasons why this is the case. Number one, yes, we are using the wrong dictionary, like using the wrong screwdriver. Number two, it's a bad dictionary. It doesn't give us the information that we want even though it says on the cover it will give you that information, for example. Or number three, we don't know how to use the dictionary. And this is an important aspect of dictionary use. 
This means that we should have a certain set of skills to be able to use a dictionary. And this set of skills is also the skills that we want to transfer to our learners in teaching them dictionary use. So what are those skills? When we want to understand those skills and identify them, it might be useful to look at the various stages that someone goes through when they experience a need to use a dictionary, or at least when they experience a need for information that can be supplied by a dictionary. There are about seven of those stages. Stage 1. The learner is in the process of reading, writing, listening or speaking, and within that situation he or she develops a need for specific information. He may, for example, wonder how many eggs there are in a dozen. Stage 2. The learner identifies the specific information for which the need exists. The learner might, for example, say, what I need is information about the meaning of the word dozen. Stage 3. The learner realizes that the information need can be satisfied by using a dictionary. That is to say that the information need is dictionary relevant. So the learner says to him or herself, I can use a dictionary to find out how many eggs there are in a dozen. Stage 4. The learner selects the appropriate type of dictionary to search for the information. The learner might say to him or herself, I'll find the information in a descriptive monolingual dictionary like the Longman South African School Dictionary. Stage 5. The learner applies his or her reference skills to search for and find the needed information. By, for example, knowing that the letter D comes after C and before E in the dictionary, and so on. Stage 6. The learner unlocks the information which is contained in different entries in the dictionary. So in this case, the definition would give the meaning of the word dozen as, for example, 12 in number. And stage 7. The learner interprets and applies the found information to his or her situation. So the learner will say, okay, so if whenever I read dozen, it means 12. So when I read a dozen eggs, it means 12 eggs. Going through these seven stages require cognitive skills that we should not underestimate and that we should not assume that our learners possess. So whenever we are going to plan dictionary training in our language curriculum or in teaching, as the syllabuses require us to do, we should use the same sort of systematic approach as we would when we are going to plan the teaching of, for example, parts of speech or types of dictionaries. And to be able to do this, we look back at those seven stages and from them we can derive the desired outcomes that a program in teaching dictionary skills should aim to achieve. And those outcomes might be the following. Firstly, knowledge of a basic functional dictionary topology. Secondly, sensitivity for information needs. The learner should realize when he or she is experiencing a need for information. Thirdly, an understanding of which information needs are dictionary relevant. That is to say, which information needs can be satisfied by using a dictionary. Fourthly, the ability to select the appropriate type of dictionary to satisfy a specific need for information, which assumes a knowledge of a basic functional dictionary topology. Fifthly, the ability to find the entry that contains the sought information in the dictionary itself. That is to say, the application of basic reference skills. Sixth, the ability to unlock the information that is contained in the relevant entries in the dictionary. And seventh, the ability to interpret and apply the found information. Any educator knows that exemplary behavior speaks louder than words. If we then are to foster a sensitivity and positive attitude towards dictionaries and dictionary use among our learners, we should ourselves 
reactive dictionary users, even conspicuous dictionary users. By doing this, we will promote the notion of lifelong learning. We can even take it one step further by integrating dictionary use in our language teaching in the classroom. We could give the learners reference tasks to find information in dictionaries which we even use as examples in our language teaching. This approach to language teaching could be called dictionary integrated language teaching. And by doing this and also teaching our learners dictionary skills through that, we can make our learners autonomous dictionary users. The most important thing, however, to remember is that the learners should be given the necessary skills to be able to use the appropriate dictionary appropriately. Because the screwdriver must be the right screwdriver. Thank you.